But that's what I'm saying. We learn by life experience, we learn by mistakes, we yeah. learn from bad teachers and good teachers. And uh, the reason I like real estate is I kind of have to do it on my own. You know, I'm not buying a, a, there's a thing called REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust. Right. So you can invest in real estate via paper, which is REITs. You can invest in gold via, you know, GLD. GLD, right. An ETF or an SLV, which is silver. I don't touch any of that stuff. I own my own gold mines, I own my own silver mines. I took one of my gold mines public this this summer, last summer, 2022, on the New York Stock Exchange. It's the richest gold mine in America. But Vlad, you know how many stupid mistakes I had to make to get there? <laughs> I bet. <laughs> I, again, that was, that's what we were teaching, that we make mistakes are how we learn. But our schools punish if you make mistakes. It goes back to my decision to become a salesman. As my rich dad said to me, if you can't sell, you won't get laid. Well, if, if you can't sell, you shouldn't be an author because I'm a best-selling author and all the academic types like the New York Times and the book companies and all this, they attack. They say, you're, you're not a good writer. I said, well, that's why I flunked out of high school because I can't write. But it's not that I couldn't write, Vlad. The teacher did not like what I was writing. There's a difference. So enriched, so I went, this is the story of, you want to be rich and happy, don't go to school. Simon & Schuster called me. And I went to New York and I sat down with Simon & Schuster and they, uh, the head guy sat down there and says, this book, if you, be, if you want to be rich and happy, don't go to school. It's a pretty good book. I could take it now. But this guy looked at me straight in the eye and says, you, you haven't told me what you know. And I sat down, I looked at this guy. I said, what do you mean I haven't told you about? He says, I know you know something. What do you know? This guy was like psychic or something. And I, I went back home. I said, what do I know? He says, when you write the book of what you know, you'll have an international bestseller. Because Rich Dad, if you want to be rich and happy, don't go to school. It was pretty good. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't a mega bestseller, but it was making its way through the rounds because I could sell it. And so finally I sat there and I was sitting, I was doing a real estate development in Arizona. And at night I would sit out in my little house and I was typing my new book out. And all of a sudden I'm typing this new book and it goes, what do I know? What do I know? And all of a sudden it came out, I had a rich dad and I had a poor dad. And that was the start of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Rich Dad, Poor Dad came out in 1997. You were 50 years old at the time. And this was based on your biological father, who was the, quote, poor dad, and a friend of yours, your best friend's father, who was an entrepreneur, who was the rich dad. Now, you know, when I did my research and so forth, a lot of people question whether this person actually existed, the rich dad. Right. Because there's lots of references to him. I, I watched some interviews. You said that he owned a ton of land in Hawaii, I guess the the land that they built the Hilton on in, uh, in Honolulu and so forth. Um, so did that person actually exist or was, is this just a concept you came up with for the book? No, I mean, I told you the story. I got court-martialed for lying. Mm. This, this is in 73 or four. And so there really did, did exist a rich dad and a poor dad. Okay. And and the and I went to ask my rich dad, I said, would you mind speaking off of me? And the family said, no. And I want you to know something. The rich don't tell people what they know. Uh, you know, I, I, mean, I don't, you know how many times I've met, one of my best friends just sold his business for $2 billion. He and I started at Xerox together, by the way. And I asked him to come and speak at my company. He says, no, they don't want to tell people what they do. So there is a rich dad. When I asked him if he would help me, he says, no. So that's that's what really happened. And so I wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and then Oprah called, then Trump called. And I don't know if you know if Trump is a real guy or not, but he's pretty he's pretty real. And he says, what you write is absolutely the truth. So uh, there's a lot of people who will say Rich Dad doesn't exist. So be it. Oprah loved it and Trump loved it. See, a lot of people want to get rich. And what my, that was my poor dad. I said, I'll make a lot more money. So he got a high paying job and he kept going back to school, you know, so he get a more high pay. And my rich dad says, no, it's measured in wealth, is measured in time. So if you quit your job, how long can you survive? So the average person, I don't know what the averages are anymore, but the average American cannot survive more than a month you know, before their savings or the bill collectors drag them off to jail or something. So a lot of Americans make a lot of money, but they have no time on their money. They cannot survive. So it's a very important question. I mean, it's probably one of the most important questions you can ask that we should ask the people listening. If you lost your job, let's say you're married, husband and wife and all this stuff, you know, 
and you lost your income, how long would you survive? And that's wealth. And so that's why today uh, my wealth will go on for generations, you know, because I have real assets. I uh, thank you for that question, Vlad. It's probably the most important question you could ask me. Wealth is measured in time, rich is measured in money. Yeah, one of the best definitions I've ever heard of the term rich is the ability to maintain your current lifestyle for the estimated rest of your life without having any new income. That's pretty if that you're, if, you know, If you're used to living in a mansion and you have a Ferrari and you can maintain that for the next 30, 40, 50 years without any new money coming in, you're rich. Correct. If you know losing your job, you suddenly have to move into an apartment and go get a Honda Civic, then it doesn't matter how many things you have at the time, you know, you're not really rich. Correct. Yep. And the thing is, is, is one more thing that Rich Dad added to it is if you lose your job uh, and you stop working, you stop working, how long will you survive? Because, I mean, you don't have to lose your job. It's like, if you stop working, how long would you survive? Mm -hmm. And for most people, it's the next paycheck. Yeah. They're gone. So they might make a lot of money, but they won't survive so that they have money, but they're not wealthy. Wealth is measured in time. So if I, if I stop today, my wealth will go on for probably hundred something years. But I'm, I'm putting all that, my wife and I putting all back in charities. It's what's called a CRT, Child will Remain to Trust. So our wealth can go on for generations. An asset is very simply something that puts money in your pocket. So think about this. Uh, so when people, you know, they make some money to buy a house, but if they stop working, that house starts taking money from their pocket. So right. it's not an asset. You buy a nice car, the car keeps taking money from your pocket. So it's a liability. You have three kids, they're definitely liabilities. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So it's, it's nothing to do with apartment houses. And so I think he's miss, miss, he got that idea from me, I know that. So anyway, it's, it's more than that. So anyway, so I write a book and I get paid probably several hundred thousand a month from my rich dad, poor dad. My book is an asset. Does that make sense to you? So yeah. if if I uh, buy a car and I lease it to an Uber driver, it could be an asset. It depends on the cash flow. Yeah. So it all depends on the financial statement, income, expense, asset, you know, all that stuff. So it's not anything to do with apartment houses. Look, it, it could be as, as simple as writing a book mm -hmm. or you can buy a stock or you can buy a bond. You know, let's say the bond is paying you 5%. I just, I don't trust bonds either. But that's the difference. It's all, it's all what your uh, cash flow is. So if you have cash coming in, more cash coming in from the bond, let's say, than cash went out, it's an asset. It's that simple. Again, it's the number one thing I learned in the military school, the academy. What's your mission in life? You know, if it's just to make money, why don't you just go be a hooker or something, you know, sell drugs. But it's, I, I really sincerely, naively maybe, I believe you have a mission, I have a mission, everybody listening has a mission. What does God want you to do? So that's what I'm saying is when I met Buckminster Fuller, his question is, what does God want you to do? And the reason a lot of people don't do it is because they don't know how to make money at it. Does that make sense to you? So yeah. they, they just keep working for somebody, or they keep doing what they do, or they, you know, but they don't ask themselves, what does God want you to do? So when I met Fuller, I said, I think I should teach money. And that was kind of my, I mean, I didn't start doing it immediately, but that's when I started to teach and all this stuff. I started practicing. And a lot of times I worked for free for years, just trying to figure it out. But that's what they teach in the Marine Corps. You know, your mission is more important than the money. Mm. So, um, and that's when I just, I said, oh my God. You know, that's what my rich dad taught me, asset versus liability, your house is not an asset. Um, but I didn't know it was so, it wasn't so obvious to me at the time. Small ebook, big impact, the wealth tree. The only four ways that will make you financially free forever. Download it here for free.